What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening to, you are watching the Complex Sneakers podcast. To my right, Mr. Matt Welty. You know one of those days when you know it's just not going to be your day? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, that's Come the energy on. we're bringing. <laughs> Come on, that's man. That's the energy? It's, it's, it's just you like. turn this thing around. Everything lines up going downhill, and you're just wondering what the next uh, domino to fall is going to be. It's only going to get, for the next hour or so, it's only going right. to get better for you, We're okay? going to stop Mr. Domino. Yeah, we will. Right. We, a little gaming reference for okay. you all. <laughs> <laughs> to my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn, how are you? You feeling a little better than... I feel good. We this got dark uh, cloud over here. <laughs> I, I'm going to try and bring up the energy. Yes. We got so much to talk about, man. It, so much transpired in the past week. Well, Trying to reverse the trajectory. Really? <laughs> Did it? Yeah. I mean, where do we start? I feel like we should pick up where we left off, which was the dinner that you were left out of. And before you get into the dinner, I do want to thank everyone who offered to take me to dinner. Appreciate the DMs. <laughs> I will survive, though. And I want to hear what did I miss? Okay. So for, for the people who didn't tune in last week, the, the, the truncated version is our friends, Paul Givalekian. Did I pronounce it right, Weldy? Givalekian. Wow, full yeah. government. PG. Okay. I'm sorry. PG. PG okay. knows. And Puneet of Locker Room Kicks had invited us to dinner last week. And when I say us, I mean Wealthy yes. and me. Joe was left out. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we wrapped up with the work day from that last shoot, we went and met them. And let the record show that did invite Joe to the dinner. Wealthy was trying to get Joe in the building. And Joe did invite after the Wealthy fact. did, not the people who okay, set the dinner Okay, so yeah. Up. Thank yeah. you. But and that's okay. You said you had to go shoot Big Draco, so it was a no anyways. <laughs> That's true. And, and also, I want to before we even get to the dinner, I want to mention, if I can, Welty, okay. this is a little self-serving, but no. the moment when I had the claw Air Max 1s on, yep. and I'm, I'm crossing, I think, 5th Avenue and 34th Street, and the bus driver on the MTA bus honks at me. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a famous guy, he so it's you not... you Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> no, she, she was pointing at my shoes. Okay. And then I walked around, and she opened the bus door. She stopped it at the, at the crosswalk, and she said... Those just came out. I got to get them. Ooh, maybe she saw them on Clark Kent first or no? Uh, I don't know. But I'm, okay. <laughs> but I'm, 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 <laughs> I should give you credit. Good. That's good. Thank you. you, had a, you and had I a hope she got her pair wherever she is right now. Good pair of sneakers. Talk about the dinner. Yeah, okay. So, man, what a, what a pleasant time it was. Food good? Does, does the food live up to how they sell it? It's like good kebab. It's good okay. kebab. But there was a bit of a snafu at the end. What was the snafu at the end? Oh, oh God! <laughs> what you, sh you should you should say this because he's gonna get okay. all he's gonna get all worked up. Well, he I can say. get mad at me. So you know they invited us to dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, a group of six of us, I think. Yes. And um, six. you know, I I pulled out my card at the six. end. Six. Okay, Joe's right. taking mental notes. <laughs> okay. thought, it, thought it was four. I, I, I pulled out six. my card at the end anyway, okay. just to you know, because I don't want to make any assumptions. So we ended up splitting the bill six ways. Everybody, including Paul PG, puts their card in. And the guy runs the cards, and he comes back with one of them, kind of a ratty-looking card. It looked like it had been oh. worn down quite a bit, oh, swiped, if, okay. swiped a lot of times over the years. You're really said, dry snake. The kebabs, <laughs> the kebab didn't didn't only rub off on you. If this is going where I think it's going, the dry snitching rubbed off on you. But go ahead. Um, this card didn't. One of the cards for th a charge for thirty five dollars. It didn't accept it. <laughs> it didn't. Okay. It didn't go. It didn't go through. So, um, PG, uh, our friend. Ended up yes. paying in cash because his card was was no good there. I don't know. I don't know what the limit is like daily. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, maybe it was because you split it six ways and the <laughs> credit card machine couldn't take that. Even though I was not invited, right? I'm giving PG the benefit of the doubt that it was a credit card machine snafu. I think that's what the guy said it was. Okay. Or the or the company. I think they said he hit the wrong button. Oh, okay. Okay. So look, he pulled out cash. <laughs> Maybe from the CDG dunks left over that I yeah, bought from him, or him maybe from the it. Busy P Air Force Ones that I bought from mm -hmm. him, but definitely not from the dinner <laughs> that I attended <laughs> with you him. Because <laughs> you absolutely were not invited yeah. to dinner. Yeah, well, I had to... But Wealthy did try to get you to come. Yes, yes, I appreciate it. And we will do a dinner. We will do a dinner. Maybe it'll be a home game, though, for me, and maybe I bring you guys to an Italian restaurant, and we don't go to the kebab place as yeah. much as I Paul, do love Paul, kebabs. bring cash. Okay. Bring cash. But like you said, <laughs> your money's no good here. <laughs> like you Clearly. said, like you said, I couldn't go because I had to last minute fly out for Soldier Boy, and episode went live. Big and, Draco. Yeah, and very entertaining, and it was trending on Twitter. Yeah. Because he. It's the first rapper ever to be on Sneaker Shop. Yeah, exactly. All the comments, <laughs> which it's it is like it's very funny that like a meme could become like a saying almost. Mm -hmm. Is that how you would describe it? It's mm -hmm. like it's. It's not like a picture meme. It's literally like a saying. Well, 
I feel like here's the thing is like from the outside looking in on it, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, no, I'm go not going to go in. So, but you're on the inside. You're not on the no, inside. No, but like uh, having to watch the episode, you know, like after mm-hmm. the fact. Um, and for me, like no hate, but just never was like a huge Soldier Boy fan from from the jump. So, kiss me through the phone didn't do anything for you. That's a that's a smash. And my sister even was like. Man, kiss me through the phone. Just yeah. was just was listening to different stuff at the okay. time. Okay. Um, Limp Biscuit. No. Okay. No Limp Biscuit. This is <laughs> what are you talking about? This is like thought, 2010. Oh, I thought. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 2009. Um, so. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, watching it and then that that whole I'm the first one who did this. It's like. It finally got funny because at first, when he's, it, it kind of comes off of like, what the vape thing? The, well, just like a few things where he genuinely yeah. believes it's like ignorance is bliss. That like I really was the first person. Like if you say something enough that you're the first person to do this, there's right. people out there who are actually going to believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're and you as like the sneaker person where we try to get things right most of the time. You're kind of like, come on, time. like come on. Right. The only thing I would say is I think everyone knows Pharrell was the first one. On Bape. He was there when it was happening. But I think that Soldier Boy feels like in his area or Atlanta, he put it in videos and he rapped about it. He had a song about it. And he saw the influence. And maybe he actually feels like for a large group of people, he influenced them by I wearing like them. I that's totally fair to say and, that he contributed to it. Yeah, that's that's what I would say. No, like, he contributed I, I, to I it. I understand but, that, but to say that, like, he was the person who started the Bape Wave in sneakers is just, yeah, like... it's it, a meme. Right, it's like... You gotta it, kind of be, it, like... But, but it, is it a meme? You know, well, where it's, like... But I think that's what makes... Behind every meme, there's, like, a shred of truth. You right. know what I mean? But I also think if you watch the full part of the episode, he does give it up to Pharrell. Like, he does say, yeah, yeah. you know, respect to what they but, did. But I just can't believe how many comments. And it's <laughs> like, it. Th- what I love about that episode, the comments, it's like peak internet where, like, yeah. everyone's saying the same thing and it just stuck. <laughs> like, this is the definition yeah. of something sticking. Well, it, it was funny, too, to see uh, Currency get in on it because currency was like wearing bape like mm-hmm. way before all them and he said i think he's just doing this for fun like right he, he, yeah but he like dismissed it like of spit a humble as ever yeah and then greg street today tweeted that he actually <laughs> bought soldier boy did you see the tweet no i didn't he bought soldier boy the superman vapes really so then we know Club. that they're legit yes because I, I, I you know there I, were there's some, a lot of yeah, questions about the legitimacy of those vapes but it finally the episode finally turned a corner for me and i was okay with it at the end when you were like, Soldier Boy, what else were you first to do? When, like It was like you were in on the joke, and I was yeah, like, Yeah, but we right. discussed that, that yeah. I was going to do that. But yeah. he, listen, super entertaining. He's an entertainer. Yeah, and every time. It's weird. Over the weekend, we flipped it very quick, but I texted super producer Dave Matthews and director Jose, and I was like, you know, you know, and I'm sure you guys know it, like humbly, when you're like, this is one of our best episodes mm-hmm. and you've guys been doing it for so long, like just from entertainment or like you look back and you're deeply in it and editing it. And then you take a step back and you're like, this is a really good entertaining episode. And that's how we felt. And it did, it did, did good. And yeah, the memes, uh, we have evidence. like a sizzle coming out. That's going to like put it to put like all his, his funny moments together. But yeah. So soldier <sighs> boy, and, and Joe, sorry, I want to give another shout out because you did mention Dave Matthews and you did mention Jose. But today, as we record this, we do have a special guest in here. It's yes, not we our guest do. On the podcast, but our guy Reese, who makes the animations that we put out every single week, the clips. He, he's hanging yes. out with us here on set, so we're happy to have him at a, at a safe social distance, of course. But of course, and young we can't, legend, great to meet him. If you haven't checked, we need to like put them all in one spot after like. Yeah, we're we, gonna sell it to Adult Swim or something. Absolutely, like that. absolutely. And the funny thing is, me and Reese are going for kebabs after this, and neither <laughs> of you are coming. Okay, so that's a little secret. But wow. yes, thank wow. you, Reese. You gotta, you gotta. So Joe, ch- Joe's gonna take them for the kebabs that you get off the cart outside. No, of the, I'm not. Nothing no, wrong with that. we may go to Morea. Maybe we'll go to Morea. Um, I don't want to make this a totally a food podcast, Brendan, but I had asked you about uh, you were supposed to go on a lobster cruise yeah. this weekend, and it didn't happen. Yeah, or I didn't. Did, I did, or did, or did, or did. It didn't happen. I did not end up going. Okay. Um, I think 
that at, at the time it just wasn't the right decision for me. The good people at Red Bull had invited me to a series of events this re- weekend around their breakdancing competition, which is Red Bull BC1. Yeah. So I did go to the actual breakdancing competition and had a good time. Nice. You know, I think Nebs got robbed. I, I would have liked to see Lokito go a little bit further, but it was a it was a good time. So why wasn't it a good decision to go on the boat? I just, I don't know. I, I, I think I had the day off and I wanted to kind of... Um, Spent some time alone, you know, so I skipped you, a lot. You had a day but... off and you had a chance to go on a boat and you thought there was better things to do out there? Well, he had a chance to go out on a boat, but he also had a chance. And I was out of town for this. We got to give a shout out. Premium Pete. Oh, yeah. The convention. I let Pete down. The conve- I thought you were going to go. Yeah. I thought you the, were going to have bottles Sopranos of... Sopranos Con, Mob Movie Con. I did pull out at the last minute. And... Did you see Pete? What do you have on a suit? And... <laughs> Look, he was looking like a million bucks up there working the crowd. I was unfortunately in L.A., but it looked like a great I w- event. I was disappointed as being like the only Jersey guy and not getting an invite to it. But I'm, I'm sure he would have. Sure, if you pulled up. Can we get a booth next time? You think? What? I don't know. We'd have to back. We into... need like a mob. Um, yeah, we'd have to back into something. some sort of like <laughs> some sort of theme. But like we could do a, it a, car- a Carmine retrospective. Yes, we could. R.I.P. The goat. If you know, you know. Spend some time with that one. Sit with that one. Okay. Let it marinate. <laughs> <laughs> Let it marinate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like man. the sauce. What a, what a weekend. What else do we have? Oh, speaking of credit cards, I briefly lost my credit card, which is a, m- a moment of panic. But thank you to the good people at Castillo de Agua for uh, recovering it for okay. me. So we're going to go. You know what that's called? Karma, because you just dry snitched. That's <laughs> karma. That what? Yeah, that's is that karma. How that works? That's karma because you had this down that you were going to talk about this. But, yeah. uh, you're, you got you're, it back. That, that may be right. I'm, I'm going to pick it up after this. Okay. So stressful. Yeah. There's nothing more stressful and then more... Re- relieving. Relieving yeah. than, like, you lost your wallet yeah. and, like, you can't find your and wallet. And then you finally find it. And then you just remember, I know exactly where I put it, but it's, like, 10 minutes into that frantic search. Yeah. And then you find it, and it's, like, losing... I can't imagine. But. Well, I think... Well, kebab's I think... on me. I, th- I think half the, the card half will be issue, just fine. Half the issue with that is that at least for me, it's like I have a black wallet, so like mm-hmm. I feel like it like I'll put it somewhere, but it like blends into yeah. like the shadow of something, <laughs> and then you're like searching the whole apartment for like where did I, where did I put it, and then yeah, that's tough. I gotta Do you have a black it. card? No, because I feel like that might. Do you remember the first time you ever got a black card, like working at a sneaker store, and someone like bust I don't know bro- if I. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen a black card in real life. I remember. I, I remember the first it's... time. Where were you, Joe Goldbar? <laughs> no. Well, wait. Sorry. I want to hear Welty's. Yeah, no, I was just. Somebody... I was just working at Foot Locker, and some doctor had come in, and I only knew because his credit card said Doctor, whatever his name was, mm-hmm. and he handed it to me, and I didn't realize that they're like kind of like made of like stone or. Stone? It's heavy, like, right? It's like slate. Stone? It's like slate or whatever you Granite? want. Granite? Yeah. It's like made of slate. I, I believe so. It's like a limestone credit yeah. card? That yes. can't be. Yes. And you pick it up and you're like, whoa. <laughs> like, yeah. like, what, some, what is some this? to it. It almost, it almost felt fake, you mm-hmm. know? Like, mm-hmm. this can't be a real Did thing. Did you tell him that? No. What did he buy? <laughs> yeah, well, we got to know what he, he bought. just bought sneakers for his whole family. And then... Okay. Sneakers for the whole family. You know what, Wealthy? Let's talk about sneakers for the whole family. What a perfect segue. Yes, that is a perfect segue. I love it. That That's a perfect segue to our question this week. That's right. I believe you have the question, that's and it's right. a good one. Our eBay sneaker giveaway of the week. Just so everybody knows, every week if you go to ebay.complex.com, you can submit a question to ask us here on the air. If we pick your question, if we read it out on the air, we are going to send you a free pair of sneakers courtesy of eBay, their authenticity guarantee program, 100% legit. They may not be your size. If they're not your size, you can sell them with no fees because eBay has no fees on sneakers over $100. So d- d- don't get upset with us if they're not your size. But the question we have is from Eric Herrera. Eric, you're getting a free pair of sneakers. Congrats. Eric from Stafford, Texas asked us, what sneakers do your parents rock? And Joe, let's show the sneakers yes. that Eric is going to win. So Eric is getting these classic Bison SB Dunks. Also, some people call them the Sport Reds. What? People call them that? That's what I heard, and that's some some people because of the toe box, but it has this orangey red toe box. But one of the first or only Dunk SBs, fully in suede, mm. and it was an era of this silver and black box, 2003. The one I feel like I, this is a shoe that you've wanted for a long time, a right, Joe? A long, long time. And what I love about this shoe is like, 
not a collaboration, mm -hmm. not like a big story. Not that flashy. Not a big story behind this. Am I, am I bugging, or is this just like something that I made up in my head, but they were called Bison after the guy from Street Fighter? I have Bison? no idea. I, I don't know about that. Okay. We'll have to check it, and then if it's wrong, we'll cut it. But um, <laughs> No, leave it in. Okay, but <laughs> no artist series, yeah. no kind of unless street what did you just say street fighter and bison uh yeah. we call we call him dictator okay um, you you're the expert yeah because the you, names are all switched in the japanese version so it's can you see M. bison uh balrog and vega but you okay. know they, they rotated the names like a musical chairs thing so can dictator you, claw and boxer still, okay can can you see a connection <laughs> I, I you can't, think he's onto something? I can't, but I'm colorblind. But I've okay. never heard of that. But I, you know, I'm not saying it's wrong. 2003, though, this released, and again, I love that it's like we obviously love SBs for the stories behind and things like that, or sometimes the hype collaborations. I just think this is such a great colorway, great materials, and I remember like recently in the last year or so, I remember I thought it was Odell. Who wore them, which is funny because Odell lifts weights in the really? Stussy Dunks. <laughs> yes. Like, there's been so many workout videos of Odell, and he's just wearing the Stussy Dunks. Really? But, and I was like, did I see these recently on Odell? But it wasn't. Kyrie Irving wore them courtside. Got gotcha. you. And Dunks a good shoe to lift weights in. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Okay, Why? Look. Just because it's flat? It's flat. All right. I'm good to know. But, Eric, you were getting this a classic. It's a classic, right? Yeah. So we 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 got to answer Eric's question. Yes. Eric asks, "What sneakers do your parents rock?" I know I've seen Welty specifically lacing his parents. You've bought sneakers for your parents. Yeah. T tell us about that, Welty. Um. Well, I I think the one that I had posted it as I had recently, uh, I believe for his birthday last year, I'd bought my dad a pair of New Balance nine nine threes. Okay. In an army in an army green. Yeah colorway and i think for easter he, he did it to him he, he wore a fit yeah yeah he yeah. did it to and him he had a like a sh like a green chambray shirt or oxford shirt with the with the new balance nine with the nine mr welty get a sign off on that asset we're definitely putting it <laughs> yeah, in yeah we can put didn't it you up buy here. your mom a pair of sneakers too Do i, I bought my mom like a pair that? of hokas for christmas i feel like i've bought my mom a lot more sneakers over the past years than my dad because my dad usually just wears New Balance like yeah. six, so he's on the wave already six twenty threes you know just mm. just he's got the like the four different shades of them yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I bought my mom a bunch of like uh, I bought her oh. all those like Air Max two thousand nine two thousand tens like yeah. back when the, so you've when been was, lacing when I was mom. working at Foot Locker and Kyanos and Lunar Glides and some, stuff like that so. right now. they're fire. Angela. Angela. Those are fire. Shouts to Angela. Thank you. Um, I'll pick up if you yeah, know. Go ahead. Uh, my so there was a time where like it might have been like Christmas break a couple years ago or whatever, where like in my hometown, Dick Sporting Goods is like great for mm -hmm. dry fit. Like mm -hmm. the best dry fit selection I've seen around. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's really good. So it's I like would, the Polo Mansion for dry it's, fit. The dry fit is like crazy, and I go into all these other stores and they don't have dry fit. Dick Sporting Goods <laughs> has great dry fit. What so, do you need all this dry fit for? I love dry fit. I wear dry fit a lot. We've mentioned this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Me and Drizzy in the dry fit. <laughs> okay. But but so I get into my brain one day. I'm gonna get myself dry fit, but I'm gonna get JLP Senior like dry fit jacket, dry fit pants, mm -hmm. and new sneakers. He he's been walking a lot. So I didn't want to get the Monarchs, but I got the M2K. Techno? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little like spin. Monarch on them. Yeah, sequel. Monarch a little plastic thing. piece out the back. Yeah, a little different. Goes a, in the sport mode. A little different, and then a little more daring. Yeah, a little. Listen, like same kind of department. What but color? What colorway are they? I think it was the white, black, and red. I okay. think. Okay. If I remember correctly. He said, "I need the Chicago's." <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually walked in them and didn't. They didn't work, and he was like. Did no. it fail the wear test? Yeah, he had the whole, like, he had the whole, whole like, fit? yeah, the whole fit where you didn't know if he was going for a walk or Satrialis, you know? <laughs> but, but, um, didn't agree with his feet. And then he went right back to New Balance, kind of like your dad. Yeah. yeah. But he does the 608. Yeah. 608. I go home. He's in the black or the white 608s. So you don't know if you give him a hug or he's going to throw a 15 yard penalty. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> New Balance 608. And then my mom, Stan Smith's green and white. You buy it for? Her? Yep. Yeah. And and again, 
Stan Smiths look great, like beat up. So yeah. we may have to re up soon, but okay. she's a green and white Stan Smith. Well, see, now I look like a piece of shit because I've never bought sneakers for either of my parents, and I can't really remember them wearing anything okay. that um, was that was notable. You know, probably just something out of Costco or something out of Walmart or something like that. Maybe a maybe a hiking type shoe for my dad. I think I'm trying to remember the the last image I have of him Some in my head. Ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. I guess um. <sighs> I guess I got to uh, be a better. What would you? I mean, what, a what's the vision? It if you had a chip, what what could you see them in? Um, huh. I, I I could get my dad some hokas. Okay. I don't know about my mom, but the thing is, they're like not into the idea. Like, if they knew how much the shoes I would want to buy them cost, they wouldn't be into it. You know what I mean? They'd be mad about it. Sort yeah. Of situation. Yeah. yeah. So I that that's my excuse at least for right now. So something to tear up the. PNW trails? <laughs> I guess so. I'll tell you what, though. I see Hoka's all over. Yeah. Like, you, it, I don't know if you guys see it, but you see people running. You look down on their feet. It's Hoka's so yeah, much. Yeah, we're, we're Hoka gang on this side for sure. Definitely. So Eric's getting those shoes again. You can submit a question to be asked on ebay.complex.com every week. Put in your questions. We will look through them. If we like the one that you submitted, we will ask it here, and you will get a free pair of shoes. Yes, and that's a good one. The Bison Dunk Low. SB coming to you, Eric, so congrats. All right, let's bring in the guest. So this week's guest, we have one of the most prominent sneaker customizers, a designer and a true sneaker artist who recently has released his own sneaker silhouette. You probably know him from the custom cleats and custom sneakers of some of your favorite NBA and NFL athletes. Please welcome to the Complex Sneakers podcast, our friend, Mosh. Thanks for having me, guys. How you doing? Good. It's, it's good to actually see you guys in person and yes. not on a Zoom. So that's how great. do we look? Spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> Spectacular. I'm disappointed you said you quit CrossFit recently. But Man, you know what happened? Um, Did they kick you out of the box? No, I actually um, I got a hip injury. I was just I, too many Spider Man lunges and things yeah. like that. And, you know, I was doing squats and, you know, I, I felt a pain in my hip and kind of. I'm used to being sore. Well, I would try to stretch it out. I just never went away. So it's been like two years. What, it's what, like, what sneakers were you wearing? Because I, 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 I was wearing Nobles. I was wearing Nobles. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's a big like noble nobles. guy as well. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you something. You are in the fitness and sneakerhead space. How much influence does he have in that space? <laughs> Is his Gage name it. bubbling it in I, the Northeast of Connecticut? You know? I, I will be honest, though. I mean, <laughs> it's, is it? I, I'm not even going to like like joke about it. The fact is that he's in this world, and obviously the CrossFit world, the fitness world, that's a whole other entity. So it's kind of like they find someone that is heavy into both things. It is a kind of cool bridge because, okay. like, you know, when I see him doing his thing, I always connotate that with those things, and it's like, why not? I mean, I feel like they're like hard worlds to like cross. Yeah, over, literally. And <laughs> hey, <laughs> dumb, okay. dumb. See, yeah. But even I'm even like not even getting into wrestling early. But even like all the WWE guys, they all do CrossFit. Like almost Seth all Rollins. of them. So that's Rollins. Armenian is. Demon. Another wrestler who's definitely into CrossFit, Finn Balor. My friend met him on the street. He is ripped. Yeah, abs upon abs. Funny story with him. Um, it was their first ever show at MSG. He lives mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. Yeah. And we're we're at his apartment. Me and my my buddy Mike. I'm sure you might have met him. Mm -hmm. um, we, I was like, Yo, when when are you going to the sh show? He's like, Oh, it's like you know, it's like a mile away. We'll probably leave like 15 minutes. Before. I'm like, Bro, I'm like, you're in Brooklyn. You need to go to Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. I'm like you need to leave like two hours before because I was like, When's your call time? Yeah. He's like five. I'm like, Bro, we have to leave now. You didn't yeah. understand it. Uh, no, because <laughs> he's from Ireland. Gotcha. Yeah. So he so his you know he. Didn't understand that part of it, so thank God we did. And at the time, I remember it was me and my buddy and him. Like we're walking, like we're his bodyguards, because like the wrestlers, yeah. you you don't you don't park underneath the garden. You park in the parking lot across the street, so you have to walk across, and all the fans are there. You're just walking in. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, so it's kind of crazy. Like and then after after the show, some of the girl wrestlers, like we'd walk them back to the room to the parking lot because they'll just get yeah annihilated. Yeah. Uh, one thing we have to talk about: you're big into wrestling. You just mentioned. How do we feel about CM Punk? I hope it signing comes. to AEW. I, I I hope it happens. I hope it does. I mean, as a fan, you just want to see him somewhere. Yes. Yeah. You know, he's just chomping at the bit to go somewhere. I mean, certainly, as a WWE fan, of course you want to see him there. Mm -hmm. But the fact to see him anywhere, and the fact is, half the WWE is at AEW now. Yes. So it's like it's going to be fun because I'm going to go to the show at um, New York. In New York, and then the one in Chicago is shortly after that, and right, people right. are thinking that CM Punk is going to go to the Chicago one. The CM Punk will be real. Him? What's that? Did you ever do sneakers for him? Um, I did a pair inspired by him, and he actually saw him, and he reached out. That's was awesome. A fan. I did. A, I was on in Chicago 
uh, Jordan Tens that did the CM Punk with, the, with the X's. And that's awesome. It worked out well, and you know, had a, you know, a little back and forth. Have you ever made a sneaker for somebody that was inspired by them and they didn't know about it, and then they saw it and they weren't too thrilled about it? No, no. Generally, because again, kind of like, ah, now the way I go about things is generally an artistic thing, and most people appreciate that no matter what. Yeah, he's I, the only one that if you made him sneakers, he'd be like. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Much, much did make me some sneakers. Yeah, that was a quick thing. I remember that was, uh, gosh, what was that for? It was like a Samsung event or something. It was like a quick that. thing, but I didn't appreciate it any less. Yeah. Still, still holds a place in my heart. I oh. thought you were just gonna say I didn't appreciate it. <laughs> I was no, like, finish no, that no, sentence. No, no. <laughs> no, come on, come on, come on. What was the um, what the football league? Uh, the XFL. NFL, yeah. The XFL. Oh, yeah, the other one. <laughs> when he, when they were doing that, um, I had suggested to Shane to make a pair of custom cleats for Vince mm. to put in his office, and he was like, ah, let's hold off on that. But then I made a pair for the Rock pair of rock deltas with the xfl stuff it's pretty cool wait you made custom shoes for the rock i made a couple of pairs for the rock and wait, what was his reaction to that um he, he was ecstatic you know he's like thanks brother you know what a, you know typical I, I, I didn't get it i didn't get a video but you know yeah <laughs> i was definitely appreciated by a couple release i've done i've done hobbs and charles shoes i did the xfl and then uh rampage ones and he actually did a big tweet about that one so that's like saved my favorites on my phone not too many get favorited that was one of them for sure but you did the xfl shoes when the XFL was first a thing, or when they did that thirty for thirty? No, I had done it when when he had him and Danny had bought the rights. It came for back got for you, a year. Got you, yeah. got you. Or not even a season. It came back for right. Yeah, yeah. COVID, it sucked because it was it was it was it was good. It was definitely improved. I mean, then COVID messed it up. Today, athletes uh, reported to NFL training camp. So happy! Oh yeah, my God. we were thinking about it. How oh. ex how excited are you? I'm ecstatic. I mean, as a fan, for one, yes. be able to go to games. You know, like that part, I'm kind of chopping at the bit to go to Minnesota and go to Buffalo and a mm -hmm. couple of these spots. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how how my role is um, with some of my guys because I mean, Diggs and Lander and now Jordan Brand guys. Yes. Um, so it's kind of like it's kind of good for me because it's like, hey, if you want to be on Jordan Brand, just rock a mosh and you'll get a Jordan mm -hmm. deal. <laughs> True, but, exactly. But no, nah, it's uh, it's been really cool. You know, Diggs had a talk. We we knew for a while he was gonna go there, and he asked me what I thought. And I was like, bro, this is your career. This is your thing. Mm -hmm. You gotta do what you gotta do. If it diminishes my role, God bless. But there'll always be other you know young athletes that, that of course that'll reach out, and who knows, in a year or two, you, they get deals. You, That's oh, what happens. Do you think it's more likely that with him being at Jordan Brand that he's going to be getting much more PE stuff than wanting to do customs? Is that what you mean I'd be by a little it? bit of both. Um, and I've actually, thankfully, I've talked to some people from Jordan about involvement and stuff. So at some point, I'll, I'll have yeah. a little something. Were they Hopefully, cool, fingers crossed. Were they crossed. cool with it? Like, yeah. do you, like, yeah. customize well, well, shoes? Thankfully, I mean, I got a rapport with them. It's been, mm -hmm. I mean, 20 years in the game, and they know who I am. They know I'm not going to diminish their brand. So, and I, there's I, still, during the season, there's still opportunities, like my cause, my cleats, that oh, you'll yeah. definitely be involved in. I think the guy, though, with the PEs now for next season is going to be Dak Prescott. He's the one who Jordan kind of put yeah, like, they, as their marquee all, face. They all get him, though. Um, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, even like Cam Jordan, I mean, who's obviously a, he's a stud and a Pro Bowl and all that stuff. You know, he was getting these crazy peas last year, and, like, they're under the radar with, like, crocodile skin and animal prints and stuff. And you don't think of a, you know, a D lineman getting these crazy peas. You think of more of the flashy guys. But then yeah. you get Devontae Adams just has plain green yeah. ones. But they're all, their style's different. Like, even Diggs, like, his, his yeah. style has gotten a lot, you know, obviously he's more fashion based, mm -hmm. but, like, there's weeks where he just wanted flat, blue cleats you know you didn't need a theme or something like that so that works out well for me because it gives me more room to work with more guys Definitely. given given your connection to him and all the pe's is there any chance that they'll slide you a mosh pe yeah maybe <laughs> you, what, mosh pe sneakers oh i don't know about that I, 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 oh, like, oh like that no he's talking about cleats right <laughs> no i mean like yeah just or anything like if like jordan would make you a oh, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, it, it, I know I mean, you said you got the connections. I don't know. Things. No, nah, well, you, you never know. But you know how like things go. Even even with like different brands, you know, like different people come and leave, and you know when pe new people come in, they kind of got their own crew and whatever. I mean, and that's just how it's then been. You don't have to like work your way back into their Rolodex when the yeah, person but you, you know knew what? with the brand isn't yeah, there anymore. Yeah, but but you know what? That that's kind of the part of the sneaker stuff that like I kind of got exhausted by, you know, and that's kind of why I was kind of excited to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, the brands, as great as they are and the people I work with, it's like, you know, I, I didn't want them to have to dictate my schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can kind of work on my own thing. And if something comes in with a brand and it's something that works, then freaking awesome. So it's just so we're clear, we love Nike, we love Jordan, we love Adidas. We I love wear everything. Yeah. I wear everything. Honestly, I am. I, I'm, I'm Switzerland when it comes to the brands, honestly. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I really am. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with all of them in some capacity, yeah. some more than others. And that's just, you know, everyone has different perceptions of custom work and you know directions they want to go and yeah i mean i'm just happy to still be part of it after 20 years we're all tied by an adidas custom 
project we were all on. Oh, yeah, yes. that's right. The Adidas uh, Superstar project. Oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did Mayor. Yep. And yep. you guys did yeah, Trinidad. We made our own for Trinidad. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And Joe? I didn't get one, but I hosted. <laughs> <laughs> and it was you, great. That you did. <laughs> so, Moss, you're doing your own thing now. Yeah. Yes. You, you love all the brands, but. It's you been, love your own brand. It's been exciting. I mean, it's it's been a time where I mean, I I know I touched on it the last time we talked was like, you know, I, I never saw myself doing my own shoe. I always just saw myself being an artist and kind of helping embellish and kind of get stories out and just whatever. And you know, over those years, I always t- try. I worked with brands, whether it was like during All Star Weekend or activations like that. Mm-hmm. And I remember doing the Jay Z four four a lot, a lot of that. Four, yeah. Yeah. And that was it's crazy. I'm like when I again when I told him that I was like that I was the one that did your shoes and he was like oh you know good to meet you and I was like Jersey right. said that yeah he was like oh shit you know that was at the was that at a Nipsey event that was that was Nipsey's Grammy event okay. so we we're it, and I was actually we didn't mean to be there I was there for something with the Clippers and okay. I was there and we left and the Clippers were blowing out whoever it was I'm like yo let's go to this Nipsey thing mm-hmm. so we went there and then I walk in and like my shoes and photos are all over the place I'm like this is crazy and we got there mad early so like I didn't really know. Who all was going to be there? Like later at night, Dave Chappelle's there, Snoop Dogg's there. All these people are there. And like I left early because again, like I was jet lagged and I was just like, you know, I, I was probably there till ten o'clock. You know, and did you get I, to go to the Rock Nation brunch? Yeah, I worked it. I, I was doing some of Puma. <laughs> Love that. But is, is it like the the tan one, right? The tan. Yeah, the veg tan looking one. T- so I I have these and with, with um, the barcode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, U.S. Men's Tan on StockX right now, the lowest yeah. ask. Forty-four thousand. This I has to be it. a troll. I love it. All is that, fours. Is that yours? Four. It's not mine. I it's not it. mine. But all four. Forty-four thousand four hundred and forty-four dollars. I love that. You're happy hilarious. to see stuff recently like that. Centralia. I will do that. But this is <laughs> the only. Going this, hold on. Um, we're gonna six grand. Wow. Really? But, the first shoe you released, the Mosh Runner Centralia. There's one, the last one just sold for eight hundred. Wow. That's awesome. This. This is the only size they have though. Size ten in these. We only made. We made. Uh, Who has the ten? We gotta figure it out right now. Russ Bankston got a pair. <laughs> I don't think Russ uh, would sell it though. <laughs> uh, I have okay, so my pair. Not that Russ likes me. Yeah, okay. no. and Shots he knows I Russ. did it. Uh, let's see. All right, so, wow, I gotta put my pair in a s- safe you place. You gotta put your pair in a, oh in a safe place. Yeah. I thought he was gonna say he's gotta put it up, <laughs> no, so I gotta lift it up. <laughs> for sale. But how are the how are the shoes going? You've been going so, good. Yeah, so you were on the podcast, I think, right before launching the right. shoe. Yep. That was the first time you were on the podcast. Now. How's it been? What's it like? Like it's been, it's been it's been really exciting like, because you know when I when before it launched I didn't know what to expect. I don't know if I'd right. sell ten pairs, if I'd sell ten thousand pairs. I had no idea because you know like it's just you're nervous as an artist. Even if I'm putting a custom, I'm always afraid of feedback. You know what are people going to say? I mean, it's you can't please everybody. So, Definitely. but you know when you're kind of putting yourself out there, and you're vulnerable because again it was a big risk because yeah. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know how strong my brand was or how my font like. You can be like, hey, I'm, I'm supporting Mosh, but they've actually put $300 out for a shoe that you don't know what you're going to get. It's a pre-order on top of that. Right. It's yep. like, all right, uh, what are we going to get it's here? It's a big ask. Yeah, it yeah. is. So, I mean, it was a lot of faith. So, like, we, we sold really well. Like, I, more than I expected. I expected to sell about 300 We sold about 500 the, the first shoe. Awesome. So, then just kind of kept going and going. Um, we're on our sixth colorway now. That's great. Um, you know, we did the pop up at Sneaker Politics last month in New shout Orleans. Mm-hmm. You know, yep, to Derek, shout out to yeah. Derek and the family. They Blaine, they they took they took care of it. You know, I I designed it. They hooked it up and showed up and lines around the block. People showed up. You know, again, you don't know anyone's gonna show. Up, people camped out. Yeah, it's do, amazing. Do like, you feel like it's a bit of a I told you so to the sneaker brands that maybe you did or didn't have projects lined up with that didn't um, come to fruition in the past? I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. You know, obviously, you want that validation. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. kind of feel like, you know, it, it's not like a chip on your shoulder, but it's just a more of like just proving to yourself and everybody else. Because, again, it, you know, I think we're all that way. You know, I, I don't believe it till I see it. And, um, you know, the next, the next shoes and actually kind of moving forward, you know, this one comes out this week. But then um we're also doing a colorway in vegas next month with a pop-up and okay. it's going to be summer slam saturday oh summer <laughs> what is that you're going right yeah, yeah. <sighs> i don't know if i'm gonna go but i'm, it's Bro, not that I'm can i go so you can go if you want yeah you can go can summer slam be fun who, who, who would you like to see there see don't you. say kevin durant wrong sport <laughs> okay i know that's your go-to for any uh, the sports. irish guy we were just talking about okay finn Balor. Finn, he's yeah. back up he's okay. back up with the main roster cool. so yeah that's my people yeah so i was Maybe get to go to SummerSlam, but I feel like SmackDown or Raw will be in New York City shortly after. 
Yeah. Pro September? I'm sure. I think selfishly, I mean, we had the Vegas thing planned way before, yeah. and we were actually, I was going to do it the week before SummerSlam, before it was announced, because I wanted to go to a Raider game. Like, okay. go pre I wanted to see a new stadium. Yeah. You know, and I figured I could go to a you know, preseason game, not have to spend $1,000 on Mariotta a seat. Is Mariota still on the Raiders? Marcus Mariota is on the Raiders right now? Am I bugging? Was he on the uh, on I believe the he was. Yeah. yeah, he moved around. I'm not sure if he's still okay. there. Let's go Ducks. Sorry, carry Oh, on. yeah, of course. Carry on. Yeah, so and then when they announced <laughs> that it was going to be SummerSlam that next week, I'm like, oh, we're moving it. And my wife's like, she goes, you keep moving with the damn day of this thing. Because, you yeah. know, she goes, first you're going to go to Raider game, then you're going to go. The, I'm like, we're locking it down. So it's actually going to be at Urban Necessities. And, uh, Shout out to JC. It's going to be very nice. dope. J actually was out there. How, how does that store look? It's awesome. Really? It's, it's, it's pretty freaking cool. There? There's a tattoo parlor, there's barber shops, there's. The ice ice cream with the shakes, like do they have like that infinity drink or whatever? That what like, is that? The the galaxy That's swirl. The they got some. They have one. They have a different rotating thing of different yeah. stuff. Like it was, and then obviously you know you get the big wall of shoes. I mean, it, it's it's a lot, and it's just like the way it's set up. It's cool. It, it's literally like culture collectors like Disney World kind of. And but just, I'm definitely interested to see that. It, the it looks crazy from it. From it's IG. dope. Yeah, I mean, and he he's done a really and just knowing that how quickly it kind of went up, it's mm -hmm. it's amazing, you know. And that's going to be a big weekend out there. Yeah, well, I, I almost it, it kind of was like, shoot, it's kind of meant to be. It's yeah. like the cross sections of all my worlds, you yeah. know, sneakers, wrestling, you know, just art need collectors. Is anyone, gonna, is anyone gonna wear the mosh runners in the ring? Kofi did. Oh, he did. Yep. Oh, nice. Kofi did. Yeah, he's bought every single one. A bunch of wrestlers have bought my stuff. NBA guys have bought us. Like, like that's the part that's cool. Do you look cool. through the orders to see if sometimes they pop up? Names? Yeah. Like, like I mean, like Tom Segura's bought all my shoes. He's like, he's a big awesome. <laughs> Um We may or may not have something going on. Okay, maybe. Oh, wow. Um, but it's um, it, it's been it's been awesome because again, it's not like people are hitting me up for free free shit. It's mm -hmm. just like I just look. I'm like, oh wow, you know. Cool. Oh, because like, you made all like the what was it? The fuck you Nike shoe for him was it? <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, and that's actually. Yeah, I mean, because I was just a fan. I went to the show, and you know, we we had, actually his wife followed me first. Mm -hmm. and so then I looked, and then you know, then I saw he was he was seeing what I was doing. So I just reached out, and then we just kind of, you know, clicked a little bit, and you know, we go back and forth, and you know, might see him at the comedy store with uh, your shoe on. <laughs> you never know. I know he he did one of his um your mom house lives with my shoes on, and did a little little. Fit pick. I was kind of proud. That's runners. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flexing with a Bret Hart shirt. On. That's awesome. <laughs> now, now, Mosh, you did mention your wife. Yep. Can we talk about her punching 50 Cent? <laughs> yeah, yeah so just thing? for some background, we were talking about college days before we were recording. and you we were threw it in there. Like, I, I was it, like, It's an awesome. Yeah, well, I was like, <laughs> you know, sorry. yeah, my college days was like we, peak 50 Cent. Made a joke about Joe's passive-aggressive 50 Cent aim away messages. Lyrics, probably, yeah. yeah. And then Mosh <laughs> chimed in. We gotta hear this story. <laughs> so, um, I went to a fifty years ago. Um, it was actually even before you did your senior shopping with okay. him, and that's when you asked about custom shoes because he was getting custom stuff from me. So I was one of the he, guys, and he really supported. He's about, them. He's about it. Yes, he's about that life. Yes. So, and what happened was, um, we befriended one of his close guys, and we got to do shoes for him. We went to the the G unit offices, or this is fifty offices, or whatever they it was. Give you a tank top. No, I don't think they made them my size at that time. But we went up there, and um, I remember he brought they brought us in and into his his office. Fifty sitting there in sweatpants with his socks on in a massage chair. He's like, "Hey, I want to meet you. I want to introduce you to my girlfriend." And he's sitting in the massage chair. It's my girlfriend, the massage chair. Okay. It's just me and my wife. We're just like, "All right." So then, you know, we're sitting there, and we must have sat in his office and like bullshitted for like two hours. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, you know, like just talking about what I did. And mm -hmm. He was like, you know, what you should really do. You should make like a couple pair of shoes and charge mad money for them. And you know, I mean, my, my wife would just exchange look like it's a really good idea. Fifty, we should probably <laughs> yeah. we should do that. Yeah. But I mean, he was generally engaged, and it was awesome. So like, you know, we were there, we were ready to leave. We're like in the uh, the lobby, getting ready to leave or whatever. And we're all like in a circle, and you know, Fifty goes to walk around my wife and like taps her on her shoulder to get around. She goes, "Oh!" And she hits him. He goes, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So you know, and then she's walking. She goes, "Oh my gosh!" She was like, "I assaulted Fifty Cent." She goes, yeah. "She goes, are they going to kill me?" I'm like, "Well, you're still here. I think you're good." But now every time, yeah, you know, that we I interact with any of them, they're like, "How's wifey? You know what's going yeah, on?" Yeah. And that, that's happened, again, like a bunch of different times that she always has her memorable... Just like punching random rappers? <laughs> you know, don't, again, don't let the Ugg boots fool you. Yeah, she, she's a gangster. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she, she's definitely... She has her own little cult following, too, people Does like Does she to, have custom Ugg boots? I feel like you got to lace her with some custom. She's, she, you know what's funny? Like, she... I do a lot of custom shell toes for her. She's a big Love shell that. toe girl. She nice. loves it. She, she has, like, 
47 white shell toes that are dusty, like, you know, how, like, Air Force Ones are for white girls now, getting all beat up. She has a million of those, but she'll, like, re-up the, the, those. And now she has a bunch of mosh runners. She, I'm, just, I'm just imagining your wife being, like, Hasbullah, just, like, hitting, <laughs> hitting someone with a hook. <laughs> Is that why you were giggling to yourself yes, over there, yeah, just yes. drawing this up in your yes. in your head? This, this little blonde girl. Yeah. <laughs> but. Can we talk about Nike wanting to sue people like you? Not like me. I mean, there's there's a couple lawsuits from last week, and we felt like it would be good to have you on here because you are the custom sneaker guy or one of the biggest names in the space, and Nike is coming out suing a couple different customizers. This company called Kick Rich, this guy Jeffrey based in Portland, and then uh, Drip Creations also. Have, have you looked at the lawsuits? Does this stuff worry um, you? I mean, I know about the Drip one because they're using fake shoes, so obviously yeah. that's the reason why they have a problem. That's yeah. that's cut and dry. The other one I don't know as much about. I know the guy worked for Nike. Right, for like five years he yeah, worked on the Air Max I mean, line. That much about it. Again, like... When it's a lawsuit that has nothing to do with me, I'm kind of like, I'm like this, eating my, eating my lunch in the corner. And there's a big fight going on over here, and I'm just like, lunch? I'm, I'm not getting in trouble. Probably, I don't know, probably some vegan nuggets or something. Okay. Something like that. Definitely not that. <laughs> but uh, nah, probably some some keto something. The keto's okay. been working. I dropped 40 pounds. Yes. You know, like, awesome. this, this shirt used to be tight. Now, 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 so, now, so now, you, now I'm in fashion. You don't you don't pay any attention to these lawsuits because it, it could affect your business, right? If it looks like Nike is going to be more strict about what. That's fine. Nike doesn't doesn't run the custom world. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the thing is, I mean, Nike's you know big brother and you know they're the mm -hmm. big name, but like I work with tons of brands and I focus on my own. You know, it's kinda, yeah. again kind of goes back to like I don't want to have these other brands dictate my business, so it's taking my own hands. So there's nothing really in this lawsuit that could affect you from like a design aesthetic or anything like that. I don't or? think so. I mean, at the end of the day, I. I think what's what is going to come from the lawsuit, from you know what I saw, was I think it's going to force customizers to be more creative. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I kind of feel like you know it's always been touchy to mess with logos, no matter what it is. I know mm -hmm. I've never been one to do the designer stuff because I know they don't play. I knew that from long before it was a trend. And I was like, like fashion was, houses. Yeah, I'll never do that stuff just because I know how much they protect that stuff. And you know, a lot, a lot of the new guys, I think they they want they get the stuff that's popular and get the clicks and you know get the rappers to want to get custom stuff and you know get their thing out there but you know there's a there's a risk with that you know it's kind of like do you want to take that risk I'd, I'd rather you know kind of pivot and you know like now football season is my time to do custom stuff totally. i want to do that and the thing is like then these brand the brands that you know might be targeting other people i'm trying to work with them you yeah. know because you're again, trying to work with the brands right yeah. well i mean with anything if it's a collaboration no matter if it's like not even a shoe stuff like if it's like you know, say I did something, I did a thing with Reese's not that long ago. Mm -hmm. They did it with Under Armour. So Under Armour got the okay. Got it. Because the thing is, like, these big, the bigger brands, like, they have legal teams and they deal with that stuff. That's what they do. I'm a hired killer. They tell me what to do and it's done and that's it. And I don't worry about that because. Did you, you know, ever worry about getting sued by a sneaker brand? I, I've never done anything to feel like I had to. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like, you've it's never like, gotten any, like, angry emails from, like, doing any sort of project when in the I past? first, No, nah, I, the only time was early, probably in the early 2000s when I was doing, like, you know, like, sports teams logos, and I got, I got a letter from, like, the, um, NCAA about using a logo or whatever, but it was actually something for Gino Oriema, and Nike had commissioned me to do it, so. So you had, you were. Yeah, 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 so that right. was the only time, and I, and, you know, I just explained what was going on, it was a one-off, and, you know, then it was fine, but, like, I just knew, I'm like, all right, well, if I do promote myself on my website, I'm not going to have logos on my yeah, site. I remember there was, like, a Supreme Varsity jacket, like, way back in the day that had all the NCAA logos right. on it, and I think that that got like poo-pooed by the NCAA. Oh, I'm sure. So I mean, they're they're very protective on that stuff. And again, it's it's something where if I do it, I'm going to make sure that I'm I'm with those people. Like if I'm doing stuff for the Vikings, I'm doing stuff for the Vikings, or I'm doing stuff for the Giants. Were you, you paying know? attention to the mischief lawsuit with the Satan sneakers for Lil Nas X? Because again, it you, was inevitable. Of course, you saw it. Yeah, yeah. But like, that, that, do you, do that you ever worry? Up. Like, does you know? I don't like, do things like that though. Yeah. That's the you don't, thing. You don't put Satan on a shoe. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> it, it's just it, it, again. It's just like I I understand both sides of it i understand why nike would be mad but i also understand why you know someone else would be like this is custom but you know some people just don't know they, they don't know the difference like you know you get moms that are hit probably hitting you up like hey matt did you hear about the satan shoes <laughs> yeah, I, feel like, you? I feel like uh i don't remember but i that's what i remember like that was the biggest issue with that is that it caused like market confusion, confusion to right. some extent and right. it was such like a provocative shoe that went so mainstream that so many people thought that Nike was right. there was legitimate confusion like people yeah. thought it right. was oh, totally I, I mean yeah. I understand why they did like on, on, on that account why but, Nike sued mischief you mean for that yeah, yeah I mean I mean it makes sense because again because it because people re you legitimately didn't know yeah 
but you know, again, when you logos is just weird. Like it's just something that I just stayed away from. And again, just how do you how do you feel about the whole bootleg uh, stuff going on these days? I mean, do you, it, do, you, do you view that in the same lane as custom sneakers? No, 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 it's, it's different. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I I know you know guys doing it, and you know the the, uh, the other guy that does the other bolts, and then there's a bunch of other. Because I you know there was like the Warren Lotus, and that was the yeah, whole yeah, big yeah. issue. I mean, that, the interesting I, thing though is even Nike has distinguished what Warren Lotus and those type of people do versus what they've called legitimate customs. I think I've mentioned this in the past. But right. In the first complaint that they filed against Warren Lotus, they were saying that this was not a quote legitimate customization so well, it seemed right. like in that zone they were setting up that legitimate customizations presumably the type of stuff you do is okay to some extent right well i mean because at the end of the day it's like i'm an artist and i'm selling art and just happens to be that the shoes the canvas you know when i do that kind of stuff and it's kind of like i don't know i mean that that's how i look at it that's how i treat it um i think when people try to blur the lines that's when it gets a little dicey and that personally i just if I am going to blur the lines, I want to make sure that someone says it's okay before I do. Yeah. Do you have like a lawyer to consult about that type of stuff? Oh yeah. 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 What, At this point, you have to. Yeah. What's been the most like uh, risque custom that you think you've done over the years that you were most worried about? Um, actually, I, I didn't really I haven't done one, but I had an idea. I wanted to do a Ouija board one at one point, and I remember I did like a teaser. This is like early IG days. <laughs> yeah, the same sneaker going like way before. <laughs> yeah, but it was like the early IG days. But it, the, the thing when I was thinking was it was it was more like a lot of times I'll see a base shoe and I think of what could be cool. Like I was gonna do it on a LeBron corks. Okay. Like the tent. Okay. And I just thought that material and like mm-hmm. the old Ouija mm-hmm. board, I like I wasn't even thinking about like the other stuff. And then as soon as I posed as like a teaser, people were like, You worship the devil and all that. I took it down real quick. <laughs> I was just like, Okay, we're not doing that idea. You knew for sure. Yeah, that. but that was that was really the only one that like I, at the time it was very innocent and very naive and me like, Oh, it'd be really cool because I'm just thinking of like things that look cool, not really deeper meetings. And you know, that's one of those things where you learn from it and you're like, All right, uh in the future we're not gonna delve into that or put your toe in that water. At yeah. All. Yeah. Do you feel like Nike appreciates your work as a whole? Because I think one of the interesting things with the lawsuits, too, is Nike can't appear here like they're going after the scene of sneaker customizers as a right. whole. And they have to pick targets, I think, that they have some beef that's beyond just them making and selling custom shoes that are authentic Nike right. shoes. I mean, I mean, it's got to come for some kind of reason. But, I mean, I mean, personally, knock, knock on wood, my relationship's good with Nike. I mean, I, I don't work with them as much as other brands. Mm-hmm. But, just, but, you know, I feel like if it's something where... You know, uh, something to plug in Mosh to do something. I'm talking in third person. I'm sorry, but to plug <laughs> me in. But you have six colorways of your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> but but the but to plug me in and have something like oh you know Mosh would be a good fit for this. You know, and then if it works, it works. And that's that's how it's been. You know, again, I'm thankful for any time the phone does ring and it makes sense. As someone who kind of in the past has like taken different materials and put them on Air Force Ones and things like that. What do you think about the Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones that were previewed a couple of weeks ago? Um, there, there's parts, there, there's certainly ones that I like more than others. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I, there's I, so I, many. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, as a Vikings fan, the purple one's cool. I mean, mm-hmm. again, I'd probably The purple get, one with the black? No, just the purple with the white one. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because, yeah. Right, but I mean, again, I'd probably get shot if I spent what they go for. I'd be or Who's divorced one or the other. Oh, my wife. Yeah. Oh, she's like, my, throw, the one that punches the one that punches fifty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's definitely doing both. It's a hostile household over there. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a. Uh, I, I walk around in eggshells. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, nah, I, I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, I, 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 again, what he's doing over there. There's things I like. Like I have a pair of the trainers, like the upcycle trainers. One pair, just because I like them. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's, I'm certainly not stunning anybody in my in my painting shop. You know, like oh, look, look, look at my kicks with my apron on. <laughs> like, yeah. Whatever. You're wearing your own shoes to paint in. Are you? Or Sometimes, are you? Okay. but you know what happens is, I, I there's one time that the first sample of the Centralia colorway, I was doing something because again, like. I'll have my sample colorway that I promote with and wear around, and then you know, then I get my final pair when everyone else gets their pairs. Got you it. know, they make them, so I always know I have at least a backup. But the original, like I, you know, I want to keep my my first ever shoe, Definitely. my first whatever. But then I was in the back doing something because I, in my building or not my building, my shop, there was something with oil or something. I was walking past, and I look and there's this big black mark on the pink suede, Oof. and I, and I was like, oh, maybe it's like a cobweb or something. Mm-hmm. No, it was oil. I'm just like, oh, it's fuck. tough. It's like yeah, a Mario it, Kart trap. Oh, or it's yeah. terrible. But it, you know, but it sucked because it was again. It was my first, you know, prototype of my first shoe. And it's like, man, I can't wear them. So now, so now, I mean, I have one other pair. That's the final pair. But like, I've been afraid to wear them because it's like, God forbid, that's the only one. I don't want to have to go make another one because it'd be a sample. I got to pay a lot of money for that. So how much does a sample cost to me? It vents. It could make everything five hundred, a couple two thousand. Really, depending just, on... just to sample up one colorway because yeah. the factory doesn't want to take the. Well, right, to... because I mean, just like anything, you have to have minimums have you, and have things. Have people asked you for a one of one of these? 
They've mentioned it. Yeah, it's because, what, like, they come to you for customs. Have they ever asked you, like, oh, I need a special edition of your sneaker? Uh, it, I mean, it, it's been brought up. But it's one of those things where, like, still, it might happen. They're, mm-hmm. like, they're like, oh, we should, you guys should, you should do a color contest or people submit their things. I'm like, I don't need help coming mm-hmm. up with colorways. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, King. Have, but, have you broke even on the shoes overall? Was that, like, a oh, hard... more? We've done more. Okay. More I, I just wasn't sure God. if it was, like, something you had to invest so much time yeah. and money into it. That, yeah, like, I mean, th- thank God. I mean, again, we're still we're still churning out. I mean, we have stories and colorways going into next year, and we're already working on the next silhouette. But I don't want to have it so they're, like, competing with each other. So I'll probably let the story run out. Because, you know, I've been doing this whole thing with, with the travel stuff and like having things that are inspired Different by destinations yeah, yeah and like and, and even if it's like, like a obvious place like vegas it's inspired by something that's not exactly just casinos or like elvis or things like that something else like even like the new orleans pair it wasn't bourbon street it was based on the street cars you know mm-hmm. something that's a little more obscure that helps me tell that story Stella. Cause, or, <laughs> or there was even i think you had mentioned there was the one story to bring it back to it where like your wife told you you needed to like make this colorway of the shoe that was that was the gouache colorway and that was it, we had a bet i don't remember what the bet was but okay. but she had it she had this idea she wanted to do a watercolor themed shoe and she's like i don't know anything about design shoes but i know people like pretty stuff and i was, she was just, just like are you gonna do it? <laughs> yeah. You know, Are you I, going I, I, to see when I open? <laughs> yeah. But um. But she won the bet, and and now uh, her shoe, her colorway, it was actually the highest selling. Wow! Look mine. at that! Amazing. So, so she's already like, yeah, I'm now the CEO, of Mosh Customs. Yeah, yeah. You're my design That's bitch. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but she's actually um she's designing one other shoe that we're gonna drop, and it, it's okay. dope, and it's cool because again, like, she's like, I'm not. She goes, I'm creative. I just can't do that stuff. So she'll kind of tell me what she wants, and then you know. But it, it's all her. Like I, I gotta give her props. She designed the box. You know, the box for the the that gouache shoe was a white box. Then you open it up, and it was just a burst of color. I didn't think of that. I, I gotta give her the props. So, mm-hmm. you know, and then people, you know, appreciate. It. And and she feels like you know she's doing something. You yeah. know, like she she feels very validated and has a lot of ammunition to rub in my face. One thing with sneaker shopping, a lot of the young artists are super into customs. Like. Uh, when I'm doing research and and they're very popular, it seems like have you got into any like young rappers as clients? It just seems like they really have an appreciation for like custom Air Force Ones mostly, right, but custom yeah. shoes in general. Yeah, yeah it has I haven't really broken too much with the younger guys. Like I've, I mean, you, you got the Wale's and mm-hmm. the young thugs. Like I've done those shoes for them. But like the younger guys, like they they seem to either go with local guys or They're friends, yeah, or fair. or they get just get put on with free shoes. Yeah. I mean, and it's someone those... sends it to them in the mail. Yeah, so right. somebody on IG. With and and, that, and you know what? And when I started, like I mean, when I was reaching out to like the Fat Joe the first time, I gave him a free pair of shoes because you know you're getting your name the out there. It's a pair of Air Forces. Like, was he hyped? Oh yeah, this is back in the Funk Flex car show days. This wow. is way back when. So what did it look like? It was like it had the Terror Squad logo with yeah, a Puerto Rican flag somewhere. Okay. I'll see if I can find it. And, and you know, but then they were ter- again. They were still terrible. I was still learning what terrible I was doing. Terrible terror squad. <laughs> uh, we could okay. we could just say it's on purpose. Um, but yeah, that, so and then like I did I did a pair for the Jizza. Did a Liquid Swords dunk. They're actually my dunk. I was a, I'm, I'm obviously a Wu Tang fan, and mm-hmm. I did the Liquid Swords artwork because I was a fan of the artwork, and I, it was for myself. And um, someone from uh, one of the A&R set me up, and was like Jizza's doing the uh, the Liquid Swords album for Pitchfork Festival, where, whatever year it was in Chicago, yeah. performing. And, the whole album the whole album yeah. yeah so he wanted to get a pair to wear on stage so i was like well i don't, I don't have enough time to make another pair so i he had my he wore the same size so i gave oh, him wow. gave him mine and actually i was like i'll make myself another pair and never i never made another what, pair what's it like uh doing custom shoes with wale being as he's such a big sneaker guy himself it's crazy because um wale was one of the first rappers that like legitimately like reached out wanted to pay you know do all that stuff but he, he taught me a lot you know he was one of the few first guys i really had a relationship with like positively um well no not, not like that <laughs> but, 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 but like who's, who's like who's like genuinely supportive and is like you yeah. know i remember he texted me on like my wedding day and said congratulations awesome. like like that's that's like when that. you know he's a good dude yep. and like he's good know, like that and not just saying because you know rappers didn't text me on my wedding day they're they're dirt bags but like while well, i genuinely care did, did jizza text you <laughs> <laughs> no no dms no nothing weird i tell you who from weird. the vikings <laughs> let us know but um, but yeah. So I mean, it's been a great continued relationship. I mean, while I I, I uh, he got a pair of the the St. Charles ones, 
Um, and, you know, obviously the tie-ins with WWE and all that stuff. We, we have a lot in common. Yes. But, uh, yeah, he was one of the first ones. The first time I connected with him, I did give him a pair to start the relationship. Because I knew, he, I mean, I was a huge fan from the mm-hmm. mixtapes. So yeah. um, he was at a show that my, my sneaker store that I was working at the time uh, sponsored. So I already what was knew. was sneaker store? Uh, it was called Stash House. It was a consignment shop that was just ended up being a dumpster fire. But it, but it <laughs> was, well, no, it was just a whole other, the owner was doing doing Got some you. funny stuff gotcha but yeah so i mean then I, but that was actually my springboard when i was doing the nerf lebrons i was doing working out of the store and painting those and that's when i left because i was like i need to go full-time doing this but um but i met well you know wally backstage and rick ross and me but Wally was the one i i focused on because i knew he was you know the real yeah. sneaker guy out of all of them even back then i mean obviously back then when when all of these uh lawsuits happen with nike and whatnot do you feel some sort of like kindredness to the other customizers out there like customizers stick together in these sort of situations i mean yeah no i i i I, sometimes i feel like the old guy yelling on the lawn because it's like you know guys like it's not that hard just be creative just like if if you're going there doing artwork and stuff you know i I don't think you have to worry but if it's kind of copy paste it's like you run that risk but i mean i got i want everyone to pull out you know and out of this and be good yeah, I want everyone to be happy. I want Nike to, to appreciate customizations and be happy with it. I mean, I want everyone who is under fire to be good. I want peace in the world, man. Like, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> want the world on fire. I mean, and 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 I and I I think they'll they'll come to something. They, they'll figure it out. I think they will. Yeah, it's always a, a out of court settlement or something like that. Yeah, I mean, glass is always half full, man. Yeah, there's no there's no way to, I, I gotta look at it that way. Wasn't one of the shoes that was like the example was like uh, Air Jordan One that looked like the Amazon logo. Yeah, yeah I, I, it seemed like in the lawsuit, and this was against Kick Rich LLC, this is this guy Jeffrey who used to work for Nike, part of the thing that Nike brought up was his work sometimes making it look like a collaboration with companies like Google or companies like Amazon, but... Uh, his, work, his work was too good, too clean. I, I guess no. so. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, I don't know, but I, I think that th- that stuff was actually commissioned by people yeah, at those, I mean, those big companies. Again, it's just one of those things where... Uh, just with logos and mixing of them, it's just, it's a risk. It's a risk you take. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if it, to us, it looks obvious that it's not an official thing. Right. Mm-hmm. There's someone who could believe that that it is. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like, you know, do you, is, it, is the juice worth the squeeze? And that's how, how I look at it. Is there more juice to squeeze now that you're doing your own shoes? Like, is the, are the profit margins better for you on stuff like that than, than painting individual sneakers? You know what? Mentally it is. Yeah. Is it? I'm excited. Okay. I get I get so hyped like I like we, we're churning out three samples at a time like like I said I already have the samples set for next year, you know well, when we're already talking about this one people are like oh we can't wait to get the shoe I'm already like four shoes ahead I'm like yo when's the sample for this? I'm already over this like let's let's get going, and and it, but it does excite me so when I do actually get to go back and touch the paintbrush and do something it's going to be because it's something I want to do not because I have to do it you can just be that much more selective yeah oh I mean I'm I'm really fortunate because again when I first started I would do every damn South Beach colorway you could think of because <laughs> I, you know, I was trying to make South, money yeah. how many South Beach sneakers oh do my you god think you I mean they I mean angels made South Beach blue because, really yes they made that paint yeah so sneaker customizers yeah. would have the exact pantone yeah. to go crazy yep. and put South Beach on everything what, yep what was the worst out of the three South Beach Yeezy or Galaxy for the customs. Um, Which mean, easy are we talking? Like you're, black you're, and you're, you're like, talking, like yeah, like you're talking, you're talking blinks and thinking yeah, yeah. Yeah, all blink. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, like you mean for results of of good and bad ones, or just on ones that are I mean, pain just, or ones just that I'm like overdoing, how much or I'm we, overdoing. We saw, yeah, saw all that well, stuff. I remember. I remember. <laughs> it's actually funny. Um, I I did did a collab shirt with Jeff Staple years and years ago at the Reed Space, and and he said. He looked at my website and I had that said no Galaxy, no Yeezy, no whatever. And he goes, "You're like the soup Nazi." He's like, he goes, "No this, no this, no yeah. this." So we had a list of all the colors I wouldn't do, and then definitely no pigeon mm-hmm. on the bottom, mm-hmm. and, that, and that was like a collab thing. So it it was like, um, I th- I think we did a lot of Galaxy. Did you a lot of Galaxy? And it, and it, I got really good at it, but it's just like you know, again, like anything, then it becomes monotonous. And yeah. but again, you know, and it was still the early days, so like you had to take it on, you had to, mm-hmm. you had to pay the bills, <laughs> you know. So yeah. but I mean, like again, like I'm, I'm really fortunate that I am where I am, so I can just be like, mm. what you usually do is I'll refer to it. if I know a younger guy that's really trying to come up, then I'll, I'll send them their their Instagram, and be like, hey, right. take take care, and that I can at least co-sign and know they're doing it right. And thankfully, like something like that, it's a really simple custom, 
I know they're going to charge way less than I will just for it's time now. Now, now I bill on yeah. my time. It's not because of, you know, whatever. Let me ask you, ideally, what percentage would you love working on your own shoe versus custom for clients? Is it 50 50? Would you love for this to be 100% or you love to play in both or what? I'd probably say 75 25 this. Your own, yeah. Yeah. It, it, just because it's, again, if, if you mess up, it's on you. You mm-hmm. know, it's something like that. You know, it's my own deadlines, it's my own things. I drive myself nuts now instead of having other clients do it or stressing me out or getting a phone call, at, you know, at, on a Thursday that needs something for a wedding on a Saturday, <laughs> like, mm. like that part, like, like obviously I, you know, I have my, my past clients that I'll take care of and, you know, I'll, they'll always be able to, if they need something to squeeze, I'm going to take care of them. Cause again, without yeah. them, I'm not here. Yeah. So at least, so I, I remember that, but, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, I have in my phone just a bunch of designs and I'm always brainstorming and trying to think of stories and it's like, it's never like, I guess the, the difference between what I do is, um, you know, if, if I want to do a shoe inspired by somebody or by something, I want to do it with that person. I don't want to just be like, hey, this is an easy colorway mm-hmm. inspired by the easy. Like, I'm, I'm going to find a way to get to Kanye and be like, hey, I want to do this. Have you tried? No, not yet. You never know, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, a, a, you put it out there. Who knows? As stressful as, you know, hitting all the deadlines are for all the shoes and as much as you want to work on your own projects, how, like, how nice are the perks of, you know, Working for the WWE or working for the Vikings and yeah, well, I mean, I mean, it, it's always a rush getting a deadline and making that stuff happen. I remember, um, I'll, I'll answer your question. I just gotta tell one one quick story. Yeah, please. Um, I remember Diggs um, Monday Night Football against the Steelers last year. Um, he was supposed they were supposed to send me a pair of cleats the day before. They were then they were going to Pittsburgh for the game. They the plane left at four p.m. Um, the, that next morning. The cleats didn't get to me until three. I had to do the J. Cole KOD artwork in like two hours. Wow. Prep them, paint them, and get them wow. back out to make the deadline for FedEx to get to Buffalo and overnight them. And he ended up going off and like whatever. And How stressed were you in that moment? Or, oh, or you're I, such I, a master that you're, you just know that you Oh, no, I was dying. Happen. No, I mean, I. It, Have you ever driven a far amount because it wouldn't get there on time to drop shoes off? Um, I've, I've driven to like like the UPS or FedEx hubs. I've done that. Um, I, I mean, again, like if I have the opportunity to drop them off physically, yeah. I'll do that. I mean, giant stuff, you know, th- thankfully my man Kyle Rudolph's on the Giants this year. So. Who's that? He's a tight end that was on the Vikings. Now he's, he's in New York. <laughs> it's all right. I yeah. can't wait. <laughs> he's a big, big giant. Fan. He's a good dude. He's gonna, he's gonna catch a lot of touchdowns. Okay, but um, yeah. So I'm excited about that. But perks. I mean, I won't say it's really perks. I think it's just beneficial relationships. Because again, it's like, not perks. We know you're backstage at everything. Yeah, but the thing is, they do that because I'll bend over backwards to make sure something gets done for them. So mm-hmm. it's very reciprocated. It's not just like, hey, we're gonna hook you up. It's like, we're, it's like, thank you for taking care of us. <laughs> Because I remember we were joking about that one time, you know, when you were saying how awesome it is to go to WWE, the like, be- Monday Night Raw. For me, the but, best. never but, invited me. But neither of you we were also like, it, but it's also awesome, too, because you're Joe LaPuma and you're backstage and get to have the VIP experience of it, you know? Fair. I, what I really said is, out of all the events that I am fortunate, fortunate to get nice access to, for some reason, I think because when I was young... I the wrestlers were like superheroes to me to go backstage and see it, it's like out of everything it's kind of like a I made it moment and yeah. every that's why we were talking about like SummerSlam or, or just wait till you come with me to the next Red Bull Lobster Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting into sports cards? Uh, here's the thing I, I was I and I'm only asking this because I feel I know it's totally random I've been watching live breaks I haven't dipped my I, foot I, I, into heard, that. I heard you watch them it's like it's therapeutic for yes you. I, heard I haven't this. dipped my my foot into that space yeah. but I've been watching them and I, I was wondering if it seems like you are someone who maybe I, I got an appreciation for it the thing is I can't I can't wrap my head around what I'm looking for and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I have an appreciation for like the top seventy, like those artist things. Okay, I'll get mm-hmm. a bunch of those cards. Like, I'll, like if you know, actions doing a card for like a Yankee or whatever, I'll support. If it's a player like or like DJ Ski or Ben mm-hmm. Ball, like, I'll Magic get one cards, of those. Are we doing that at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 if you want, no. <laughs> I need I need something witty, but no. I, if you I, want, I know you're about How, my life. You are such a proponent of magic cards. There's no live breaks that you're watching. It is no. I'm, my not, favorite. I'm not in the game like that right now. I don't want to misrepresent. I'm why not. Why aren't you wearing the magic card around your neck like like Jay Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're you really like, about that life, get Ben Bar no, to mint not, one yeah, for right, you. Right now, I, I don't want to misrepresent. Like I'm really deep in that world at this right. moment. You know, once upon a time. Right. Isn't the Certainly. shoe surgeon making? He got cards. One. Yeah. He he. Um, you gonna he, let him eat your cake like that? <laughs> 
I'm happy for him. <laughs> I'd be no, nah, <laughs> not be honest with you. As a, as a competitor, I'm a competitive dude. I always am. But yeah. you know, Dominic's a friend and whatever. Yeah, of course, it's, yeah, you're I'm a friend of the program. Yeah, just joking. But, but I start. I was like, man, I'm like, I'm the guy that played baseball in my life. <laughs> but um, but no, I um, I'm trying to get in. Um, what card would you do if you had your choice? I'm a Frank Thomas guy. I'm oh, a, I'm that's a good one. I'm, I'm big, that's a good but one. But the thing is, but the thing is, there's been a lot of Frank Thomas ones. Okay. So like, that's the thing. Like I've I've noticed because like I I pay attention to you know who gets you know what's releasing. It's a lot of Yankees and a lot of Dodgers. You know, but in the first edition, there was a lot of Frank Thomas ones. But like, I got all of them just because. Reebok athlete Frank Thomas. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm right here with you. But yeah, so I get a bunch of those, and I actually got one of the. Um, there's more collectible ones I found out, but I got the shoe surgeon Griffey one, and I'm getting one of the foil ones, which is like the limited one. Dominic's nice. like, I'm gonna buy. It. He goes, I want that. I'm like, No, I'm like, yeah. it's for like 600 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Flip it back to him. Yeah, but no, nah, it, it's cool. <laughs> but it, you know, but like again, like I'll just kind of support the, the ones I like with the artwork. Like like yeah. I like I couldn't care less about what they're worth because I don't think they're really worth anything. Like, you get a special one but if i like them you know they look cool and you know it's art collecting art and supporting your friends too definitely you're not investing big time in the secondary card market <sighs> no the thing again the thing is like the rush is cool to open the packs but i don't yeah. know what the hell i'm looking for so yeah. like, like i remember like i was in target once and there was like a box of like, baseball cards i open them up and i'm like what, what kind of box because that's very like, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. they I, had I, to stop prism. i think selling them at target yeah, yeah. Because, that's how it has yeah, to be online prisms. i'm so out of my prisms I, I, yeah right. that's all it but i remember i i got you know i got a box and like i didn't know what i was looking at so like i i did FaceTime. you have to fight anybody for the box or no. you just walked right no. I, that, that, that's <laughs> only, if it's easy then i'm gonna go get, i'm not gonna yeah. go invest the time but i happen to just be doing Picking up groceries and stuff, and I was like, "Oh, there's a box," and you know, it's like twenty bucks. I'm like, "Well, didn't didn't you cool. play minor league baseball or was it college?" It was college, but I got offered a contract with the Reds. So yeah. there's no like pitcher of you. You were a pitcher, right? Yeah. There's no yeah. there's no pitcher of you oh, on, the, on the mound that you could somehow flip into a. You know, it's actually baseball funny. Card? I remember a while ago, um, the StockX was going to do something with the cards with Upper Deck. Yeah, yeah, I was in that. I got the mock-up You had a card? One. Yeah, it didn't come out. It didn't come out. Wait, wait hold on. Card? It didn't come out. Yes, no. I sent Josh. the, I sent the wait, image. Wait, wait, is there, is there like Joe LaPuma running around the track? No, like, it was me. It school? was me in the store. And, it, and the stats, I don't know what the stats were. Mine, it was some <laughs> Black Air Force Ones <laughs> on. No, the stats. I'm not Here. sure. That's the mock-up. Yeah, mock I got my mock-up too. Yeah. Wow. I was, like, I was so, happened with that? I was so gas. I don't know. I don't know if it happened when when you, you know what? I feel like one of the images of Mosh, because I have some some indelible images of Mosh in my head because I remember you used to play in the Nike influencer games like a mm -hmm. stickball game I was a on ringer. Mercer Street. Yeah. I put it on Canal Street. Dingers. Yeah. I called my shot and put it on Canal Street. Yeah. I got video of it. Sent it from Canal to Houston. Yeah. It was I was it, that was actually a really great experience. I remember me and uh Pecos were getting drunk <laughs> on Mercer. He had a cooler <laughs> with him. Because like I was, it was what like, were you drinking? He had he had like Duce back then. Yeah. Like he, he wasn't playing, but I remember I was getting like beers. And he was like, Mosh, don't worry about it. I got it. He walks out with a cooler, and we're like in the field. Well, it's on the street. Yeah. With this cooler. Mercy street. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is amazing. Did but your then, team win? Yeah. Yeah, we won. Actually, the day before we played at, um, at City Field, and it, that was like, that was me and Russ just talking about Mets yeah. in eight, living in 86 and. Yeah, Lee Mazzilli. If you had to, if you had to compare, you're, Met, you're not a Mets fan. I'm a White Sox fan. Oh, that's but what I, I thought. But my mom, my mom's a Mets fan. So Joe, be, and Joe is a Mets fan. Just so. Actually, yep. I actually just did cleats for uh, Kevin Pillar and Lindor for Friday for the for the black jerseys. Oh, Lindor's hurt though. I know. Well, it, that's funny because I, I dropped them off to my FedEx. So guy. you did a New Balance. Yeah. Ooh, can we get pictures of that? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, because it'll be Friday. So I like. Yeah, it yeah. sucks that he can't. He's not going to be playing. Well, but I, I yeah, dropped him off to my UPS recovery. guy's a huge Mets fan, so I told him, you know, because he, you know, he knows what I do. He's like, oh, whatever, Lindor, whatever. And yeah. I told him, he goes, does that mean he's going to play? I'm like, I don't know. He might have some nice cleats on the bench. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> so we're going to say maybe maybe a good walk off question. If you had to compare your baseball game to one player, who is it? David Wells. Oh, <laughs> boomer! Hold on, that's awesome. Hold on, you know, you, like you, I that. think you probably know him. You, yeah. you'll know. You think I know who but this I, is? But I think but so. You're really giving me any faith. He's a legend. I legend. Know big who, left, uh, big burly lefty, and actually, legend. I, he I looks pitched big burly lefty. He's got a mustache, soul. kind of a Heart man after my own heart. I, yeah. I, I actually pitched in Yankee Stadium the day after Wells threw his perfect game. I was because I was you know in college. It was the all region game. It was Nick the upstate team versus the city team. And I was, I was. Um, That's a great one. I was a freshman, dude. I have no I was, idea who this. You guys give me way too much credit. Boomer. I do not know who this person. He's is. like, he, he's legend. awesome. He's great. Yeah. Legend. Per perfect game. But it was like the heart and soul of the those like of those teams, right? Back then, every time. Yeah, back then, every time David he pitched. Cone, Eddie Pettit. Yeah. Self-described Jim Rat. See? Sorry, I mean, go on. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting hip to him right now. There's a flying here. I saw, you guys I, notice I, it? I, 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 no, I saw you lock yeah. Very much a Breaking Bad moment. <laughs> <laughs> Pitched the fifteenth perfect
What? Who did what he team? Do, 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 who was the opposing team when he? This is some baseball oh, trivia. Oh, I don't know, bro. I was, I was literally in college. The Reds. No. Uh, I don't know. Any guesses? No. Wealthy. The Minnesota Twins. Oh, okay. Oh. There you, you go. made it like we were gonna know that. <laughs> I mean, you thought I was gonna know. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm baseball and hardware yeah. over here. Like, come on, um, I'm Rayman sorry, the stats. We've been talking a lot about your shoes, but yeah. last time you were on the podcast, like I said, you were about to release your first colorway. This Friday, you're dropping another one. You said it's your sixth? Yeah. And talk about the one that is dropping the day that this comes out. All right. This colorway is inspired by the caverns and the national parks of Utah. So it's like Bryce Canyon, Zion okay. National Park. If you look at those colorways. And you look at the colorways, obviously, this is a, you can see some volcano vibes. You can see some bacon vibes. And that, bacon that, that, vibes, that for color, sure. I was yeah. thinking that, it, but I didn't want to say it. No, nah, yeah, I mean, that, that color palette. You, but think, it, yeah. you think Bonnie's going to sue? He doesn't own colors. <laughs> He, he didn't make Bryce Canyon. Wait, who'd you say? Ronnie. Ronnie. <laughs> oh, oh. Volcano. But, nah. But, oh, oh, oh. But if you actually look at the colors of, of the canyons, it's literally this color palette. I actually went with the, uh, the little colors and literally just pulling them. But um, so I was inspired by that. Um, Vibram Soul is always, you know, the quality materials, all that good stuff. And the pre-order goes for the 72 hours just because it's been cool to see – Everyone want to get a chance to get these things because, like, what happens is now the first time people kind of slept, you know, people that are yep. fans, they bought them, they're happy, and you know the reception's been good. And now people are seeing more and more people with them. You know, they get they warm up a little more because, like, at the end of the day, even do, you, if it, do you cap it at all, or you just let the pre order rock? Let, for, let it rock. For, I mean, I mean, I and you can I fulfill pray, it no matter what. No, no capping around here. Yeah, no, no capping. But I, I mean, I pray it comes to a point where it's like, you know, we're doing you know ten thousand units. That'd be great. I mean, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's like I. I I think it's my way to, to cap it for 72 hours. Still make it cool. Keep keep it special for the people that do support. You know, people have already asked me, we're going to retro ones and whatever. And I, I just say no because I want to keep it special for those people that did support me from the jump. You know, I don't want to, you know, I want to build this correctly. I want to keep it cool. Um, you know, it's crazy to see a pre-order item going for, you know, $2,000, 750 whatever. It's crazy because you could have just bought it. you like that? Them. It makes me feel good because yeah. it means it's coveted. You know, people care about it. You Definitely. know, and, and you know, we're just doing more and more stories. Um, again, um, what's actually, the cadence been? Um, we've been doing. I've been doing a show a month. Oh wow! Um, when we when I first started, I was doing it. Um, I would wait like a month and a half, two months, because I would wait for the people to get their shoes. Because the pre-order, mm-hmm. I wanted to build, make sure people understood that they were going to get their shoes, not just me run off with three hundred bucks and whatever. But now, you know, after a couple of releases, I, I was like, okay, you guys should be, know by now you're going to get your shoes. I feel comfortable, and I, I was just getting stifled creatively. I'm like, yeah. I'm just you know frothing at the mouth, like can't wait mm-hmm. to get the next one, next one. So we do once a month, and now they understand that it's going to be mm-hmm. one a month, and they're like, what's the next one? What's the next one? So they're they're kind of get as, as excited anticipation as I am. It's great, man! Congratulations! It's, yep. It seems like seems like it was a while ago, but it was very. It wasn't that no. long ago, and to, for you to be on your sixth original design, coupled with all the work that you're going to have very soon, whether it's WWE, maybe some AEW, because they're yeah. AEW. They're, oh, I, I've done a couple. I've done stuff. What for is a AEW? AEW is like a rival wrestling organization that is. You know, you could speak more to it, picking up a lot of steam, some really, really yeah. good wrestlers. Are you guys at the WWE going to be upset, though, if you're rocking with the A? No, there's, there's, people, there's people that are married that are on AEW and WWE. Okay, so, <laughs> so we're not worried about that. No, it, it's one of those things where, like, I just appreciate being entertained. I know, I know yeah. you, you know, you talk about the wrestling part. It, it, it's entertainment, man. It's like watching a movie. Definitely. You know, people are like, oh, it's fake. No. I'm, I'm not. Wa- I'm not watching The Rock. Wait, you said I'm it, not me. So, no, but I know. You, I know how, how you feel yeah, about it. So, but <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring it up. No, you I don't said have always to. though. Not, I not bring... to, no, but you used to. I see but he, I, I, but, ju- the judging eyes over here. He um he got into it <laughs> over the summer. He's been watching documentaries, and I think he oh, has yeah. more dark of the side of the ring. Dark, dark side of the ring. You would watch that. The dark <laughs> side of it. <laughs> caught some. Caught some grilling with Jr. podcasts. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, it, it's it's entertaining. There's a couple of good ones. There's uh, there's a wrestle rap podcast. That's Emilio Sparks. Emilio Sparks, shout out my yes. guy. OG. Yes. Staten oh, Island yes, legend. Sir. OG. Yes, Staten sir. Island legend Emilio oh, Sparks. I hope he sees this. Yeah. Shout out to Emilio. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to think of uh, the Not Sam one I, I, I listened to. Shout out to Not Sam. Sam Roberts. Sam, yeah. Sam Roberts. Yeah. Mosh Gang supporter. Yeah. Buys the kicks. It's, it's been cool to just see people generally like you know, buying them and support. They don't even tell me until they just pop up. It's awesome. That's it's awesome, a great man. feeling. Congratulations. Thanks, You're going to have a very busy end of the summer and probably a even busier fall. So 
Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Yes. It's thanks, been guys. always great to chop it up with you. And yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And I love all the brands. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> this has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We are actually off next week, so we will see you guys in two weeks. Have a great weekend. Like, subscribe, and comment.